All righty. Um, welcome back, everyone. Uh, thanks for tuning in to our corn stream, where we provide answers for COVID-19, um, trying to provide you in the community with updates as much as possible, given the situation um, we are all in. As always, I'm Abra Ramesh. I am your member at large on the school board. And I'm Kimberly Watang. I am the student representative to the school board. Um, perfect. Uh, so today, we're, as always, we're going to go over a couple of general updates um, in addition to answers to questions that you brought forward to us and any updates on particular topics given the um, changing conditions and where we were at um, since our last live stream. And then we'll open it up to Q&A. Um, we also would love to uh, encourage you guys during the Q&A to share your ideas as well. I know a number of you have brought forward suggestions and questions um, that we've all taken uh, to heart and, and, and brought forward to staff to kind of shape things as we move along here. So as we, uh, let's go straight to it. So um, as Kimberly will go ahead with Governor Northam's um, update from this week. So Governor Northam issued an executive order uh, on Tuesday regarding the stay at home order. So to give a kind of short synopsis, it kind of is what it sounds like. The order is that um, all Virginians should stay home until June 10th. And there are exceptions, of course, like um, traveling to and from one's residence to place of worship or work, engaging in outdoor activity that strictly follows the social distancing guidelines, travel, travel requiring a court order or facilitate child custody, visitation and child care, taking care of um, other individuals, animals, or visiting the home of a family member, seeking medical attention, social services, government, governmental services, law enforcement, emergency, and obtaining food, beverages, goods, or services as permitted in this order. So hang in there, guys. We're going to be home for a while. Um, moving forward, um, so from the state, so the Secretary of Education uh, held a webinar um, to update localities on what's going on. As you guys may know, uh, the federal government provided a stimulus package last week, um, and uh, we're going to be receiving, our state is going to be receiving about $300 million uh, in K-12 through funding, so in specific education funding for Virginia. Um, 200, about $240 million of that will be going to localities directly, and the remaining 60 million will be up to the discretion of the governor. So we have yet to hear updates on how that'll be uh, uh, parsed out. Um, the Virginia Secretary of Education also updated us um, that he is sitting on two uh, task forces right now in handling the crisis, both the economic crisis task force and the health and uh, safety uh, task forces. So he will be providing us with updates and, and hopefully obviously bringing a voice to education and the various issues that are affecting us statewide as a result of these changes. Um, on the county level, so the Board of Supervisors recently had a meeting um, and they were discussing the budget, adjusting timelines to see where we're going from here. Uh, as you guys might be aware, you know, the school board, we had our uh, schedule for the budget uh, moving forward before this crisis, uh, which we are now kind of adjusting and have to cancel some of those meetings. Uh, and we'll be looking ahead to meetings on the uh, April 20th, I believe, the week, uh, the week in the weeks coming forward um, to discuss the budget uh, and, and figure out what are what are things going to look like here uh, based on these changes. The Board of Supervisors, specifically, um, when they met, uh, they looked at 73 about 73 million dollars in revenue losses that um, we're expecting. But the good news is, um, we currently uh, they're they're not currently planning to uh, change the tax situation. So folks. Um, you know, the, the vote hasn't happened just yet, but, but that's where we stand because they're aware of the, the crazy situation for everyone. Um, and the other good news is we do have reserves. So luckily um, there's a revenue stabilization reserve and economics op opportunity reserve um, and a catastrophe reserve that the Board of Supervisors are drawing from. Um, and so hope, for now we're focusing on quarterly budgets um, on the Board of Supervisors and uh, and they have posted a schedule. Um, so what that's gonna look like is, you know, on April 7th uh, will be a release of the revised budget proposal. Um, and then you'll see the timeline as well. For those who wanna contribute, as you may know, every year normally, there's a huge in-person meeting 
that occurs uh, at the government center to kind of provide your input on what the budgetary funds should be spent on. Uh, for this cycle, given what's going on, between April 14th and 16th, there will be an opportunity for public comment. Um, so you can provide your video testimony or testimony via phone or mail written um, for, for that time period. And then uh, you know the schedule will be posted for the rest of the dates. And the school board accordingly will be adjusting as well. Um, because as you may know, our budget cycles are in collaboration because we rely on the county for a lot of, uh, for more than half of our budget. Um, so that's just a little bit of an update on, on the county side of things. Uh, and as we move forward, we'll be trying to provide as much information as possible, as always, of course. And we'll also be having our own budget hearing um, that will be virtual for you guys to tune into. So if that's something you're looking, uh, looking for, make sure you're paying attention on the school board website uh, for when those will be posted. All right, go ahead, Kimberly. So these are some statistics provided by the Fairfax County Health Department. So in terms of the coronavirus, there are 40 new positive cases and there's a total of 328 positive cases with a total of five deaths. Um, yeah, those are the statistics from the Fairfax County Health Department. Yeah, um, so, and that's for our locality. So Fairfax County, City of Fairfax and City of Falls Church. Um, in terms of specific questions that you may have about particular school communities or certain staff or certain students, uh, I know we've received some. Um, I want to remind everyone that in to ensure everyone's privacy and use, as you may know, HIPAA has certain guidelines on what health information can be shared or not shared, right? And that's a good thing because we all want to make sure our health information is private. Um, so we can't necessarily give particulars. But if you do have questions about any of the specific school cases, you can contact Lucy Caldwell in the Office of Communications directly um, and her information is on the website. Go ahead. Yeah. So, <laughs> so there's been almost 200,000 meals delivered so far. And I just wanna say that's completely like insane. And that's to the thanks of our wonderful food staff and everybody working hard in the county. Meals will be 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. starting Monday. So that is a different time. That's a changed time. So just want to note that it's from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. starting Monday. Absolutely. Um, thanks. And uh, technology as well has been distributed. Um, we have uh, the school system has distributed over 6,000 laptops as of now. Um, so the high school and middle school laptop distribution has, uh, for the most part, been completed. Um, so if you are in either of those categories and still uh, need resources, technology, materials, be sure to reach out um, to your school community, particularly your principal, to make sure that you're connected and have that before April 14th when instruction begins. Um, elementary school rollout has been has started as well. There is conversation about whether K through two will also have that opportunity, but certainly for the older ages, um, our technology team has been working so hard to make sure that they provide that. Um, it's been paused just this week because uh, as you can imagine, this distribution, as we mentioned before, involves a lot of safety measures uh, that we get guidance from the Department of Health, the State Department of Health for. So, uh, you know, the distribution has to be done one-to-one -on -one and whatnot. So making sure we're all on the same page with those guidelines after the governor's order this week in addition to the translations that are required and whatnot to access families. Um, those are all being looked into after Tuesday's announcement. Um, yeah. Okay. So in terms of education, so there is a lot here. So I ask that you bear with me. So through from K through two, which is uh, the big concern to many parents, it's like it said there we're gonna be tempering expectations. So that we're gonna be working through what's going on that's still a work in progress. All, all principals held a virtual meeting with all teachers on Monday to provide instruction and students should be hearing from their two teachers in a few days um, and gr for grades. So, cause I know this is a big concern for many students, especially the leadership team had a meeting today with principals to discuss the grading situation. It's nothing is finalized yet, but your, ad your advocacy is definitely being heard. Athletics, um, concerns like regrades are being taken into account. 
students now have the opportunity to turn in miss any missing work for um, third quarter to bring their grade up and no assignments will be graded during the school's closure just to make sure that that is completely emphasized this decision was made to be fair and equitable to all students and there'll be feedback on student performance and it will help to positively influence overall grades so teachers um, will be helping students to bring up their third quarter to bring up their third quarter grades and finish up assignments to receive a fair and if there's any inconsistency with that um, so now you know where the school division is as an entire system. If your teacher may be, you know, giving different instruction or whatnot, you're welcome to reach out. I would recommend asking for clarification from your teacher and then reaching out to your principal. Um, and then, you know, moving up the chain of command if you have concerns or questions about those policies right now. Um, and, and to clarify as well, the grading situation remains one that has not been fully decided on. There have been regular meetings throughout this week um, to discuss with principals between, you know, the director of instructional services with our deputy superintendent to make sure all considerations are taken into account because you guys have brought up really important objections, right? So like Kimberly mentioned, those of you who are athletes and are concerned that, you know, a pass fail is converted into a D when you apply for colleges, right? So that's something we certainly don't want to be the case. Um, and so those are all factors that are being considered right now um, to make sure that we provide avenues uh, for all students to be successful. Regarding packets, so um, grade specific learning packets uh, should start, are going to start arriving now. So you should be expecting them soon, um, ideally, potentially even today. Um, they're also available on Blackboard, so be sure to check there. Uh, and, and they won't be graded or turned in. Um, but are going to be a really important part of distance learning to follow up with your uh, teacher and whatnot. Uh, and to perhaps follow up specifically in office hours if you're struggling with any concepts to make sure that you're, you're following up. Um, in terms of grading, uh, as we mentioned before, so assignments during school closure won't be graded. Um, that's kind of a universal policy that's been in place and is according to Virginia Department of Education's guidance. Um, but uh, just be aware that these packets are going to be an opportunity again for practice and whatnot. Um, if you received more than one packet, uh, it was an error. Um, don't worry about that. We addressed, you know, we discussed that um, with staff and whatnot, and it should be fixed moving forward. Um, you are able to opt out of uh, receiving packets now, so you can find the link on the website. Um, and if anyone needs me to go over it in Q and A, I'm happy to also show it through our screen share. Um, to kind of more directly show you where you can do that. So that's a response to your questions um, from last time about opting out of paper packets. Um, and you're able to do that now. And finally, I know that when, you know, we had a teacher who asked if packets will be mailed to teachers, they won't be mailed to you, but they will be available online uh, for you to access and for sure to know what's, um, what, you know, to follow up with students on the material that they're covering. Um, in addition, so you can you may contact counselors and teachers for office hours now. So uh, they should be sending or posting their schedules, and you're able to uh, sign up for periods of time to you know get clarification on anything, to go over material, or to catch up on previous content. Regarding special education, go for it. Yeah. So regarding special education, so we are continuing to advocate for state guidance. And flexibility and the school system has received many questions um, students in private settings which is funded by the CS the CSA the Children's Services Act office offers um, offers through state and local funding and we only cover the cost of transport and there is the MS MAS multi-agency services has um, collab been collaborating with each placement so contact your case manager for follow-up. The MAS staff will, are working with IT now to plan, make a plan for student access to devices. Um, Teresa Johnson is working on, on access to school-based devices that have been made available prior and our offices include Fairfax, Walsh Church, um, Children's Services, uh, Act Off Office, and it's awaiting communication on plans from that. Yeah, so the special ed situation may be a little bit confusing, but um, if you have, you know, more specified questions, feel free to ask them as well in the Q&A. Um, you know, as 
as Kimberly implied, a lot of that's con uh, con constantly being figured out now. Um, and our Teresa Johnson, who she referred to as our director of uh, special, uh, special services, um, which includes special education uh, and is, is going to be providing more information on that soon. Seniors. Okay, so we know a lot of you guys have been asking questions. I was able to get some updates. Um, so our deputy superintendent has uh, formed a, an informal working group to kind of discuss what possibilities uh, are out there for us to make sure that folks can have a graduation experience. Um, as you know, our current graduation dates have been canceled given the governor's order, but we are committed um, to having an alternative. Um, so that, so nothing's off the table. It is gonna be a brainstorming kind of process right now. And we are hoping that you reach out so that we can have a collaborative group that comes up with the best possible ideas for how we can um, do things. There have been conversations about potential virtual graduation or a delayed graduation if we have the opportunity in the summer. Depending on what unfolds, um, everything is on the table to make sure that you guys have a special experience and we certainly feel for um, what's going on. Now, um, in terms of, uh, yeah, and Kimberly and I will also be doing a specific corn stream on that. So um, to brainstorm with the community on what ideas uh, are out there um, to see what we can bring forth to this working group and hopefully facilitate through staff's efforts. I think I mentioned last time and I'll clarify again that uh, Right now, the focus is the current distance learning plan, right? As we roll through for April 14th to make sure everyone's on the same page, has the resources they need. Um, but this is on the, uh, you know, a, 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 an agenda item that will be addressed shortly after that. Uh, Dr. Braybrand also sent a letter um, this week, a couple of days ago. I believe it was yesterday or two days ago, Kimberly. I remember it being yesterday by my email. Yesterday, yeah. So he sent an email that you should have received um, about kind of this, the plans for seniors in more detail. Um, and, and it's all, like I said, on the table. So from there, um, we, oh, and we had one other question about uh, grades for seniors and graduation. Regardless, as we've mentioned before, uh, seniors will be graduating. If you are you know, in a situation where you might not be passing and whatnot, you will still graduate. Um, it's just gonna, you know, be. It's gonna involve additional distance learning and and um, making sure you're in touch with your your instructors on a case by case, figuring out what the situation is. Um, in terms of finals, uh, that is still being discussed as well. So, uh, you know, read the previous conversation that I was that we were having about grades and and what um, Kimberly helped explain as well, uh, because it's a, a conversation that is ongoing. Um, final exams have not been decided on yet. So I just wanted to make sure we uh, covered all the questions that you asked last time. Um, and unless Kimberly has anything to add, um, we will go ahead and open it up for questions. I think that's about it. I think that's all I have. Cool. Um, Dr. Brabrand will also be holding a Facebook Live tomorrow that provides more system-wide updates. It'll be at two o'clock from the FCPS Facebook page. Um, so be sure to tune in if you have um, if you wanna kind of know more about the entire system-wide plan um, beyond just kind of the specific questions that you guys have brought forward. So I am checking now and seeing what questions you may have. So we have a question in Arabic. Um, <laughs> We did commit to providing um, materials in all languages, so I will go ahead and answer that in Arabic. هل الحلقة خاصة بموضوع فيروس كورونا؟ نعم، وخاصة بشؤون المدارس وأمور التعليم هنا في مقاطعة Fairfax بسبب التغييرات بعد الفيروس. شكرا. Okay. <laughs> Any other questions? So the question was whether this live stream contents are specific to the coronavirus. Of course, you're welcome to ask any questions, uh, you know, about any educational topic um, that we can be helpful on. Uh, but this particular set of live streams has been uh, 
for the coronavirus changes in the school system to kind of help quell anxieties and whatnot. While we wait for additional questions, I'm gonna try to pull up a couple of the resources that we referred to earlier um, to see, to show folks where they can find the material. So bear with me just a minute here. Is Braybrand likely to get into the budget process tomorrow? That's a very good question. Um, his live stream is specific to um, the COVID changes. Um, let me check real quick here to see if I have an updated agenda um, of information on that. So it doesn't look like we have particular information on that. Um, I'm sorry, Norm, uh, but I'm sure that um, you're welcome to ask him in the comments during his Facebook Live session. Um, but for clarity on the meetings, I'm going to pull up here to tell you guys what's happened, what the plans are. So as of right now, we have, so the, it was canceled for the, the 20th that I mentioned earlier on Wednesday or Thursday, April 23rd uh, at 10 a.m. The school board will per possibly, it's not yet confirmed. So be sure to check the public website. Um, but this is the tentative time for when we'll be discussing um, the process and having our public meeting on it. Okay, anyone with questions, please go ahead and send them in. So this is an opportunity, folks, to ask any questions. We can clarify. Sorry, Kimberly, go ahead. Yeah, while we're waiting, I'm looking through some of these questions, and I don't think we got some of like some of them. I'm not sure if we had the opportunity to answer. So I'm just gonna like absolutely. Yeah. So there's a a question that came up before, and the question was, with Blackboard collaborate, will the teacher be the only one on video, or will the entire class be able to see like a group chat? So I'm not sure if we answered that one before, but with Blackboard Collaborate, I've used it a couple of times. So it's kind of, if you're familiar with Zoom, it's kind of almost just like that. And you'll be, your teacher will be able to see you and you, but you do have the opportunity to mute yourself or turn off your um, camera, but it will kind of be as if we can all see each other as well as the teacher. Exactly. Um, um, I can show actually an example of what that will look like. Um, in just a sec, it's loading. Okay, so let me screen share here.
Okay, so as you guys um, can see here, I'm on the Face Fairfax County YouTube. Um, this was our previous board meeting. And you'll notice we actually used uh, Blackboard Collaborate ourselves. Um, and you can see here what it looked like. Um, so you'll notice that there's a small image here for each member who's speaking. So in a similar way, um, as someone begins speaking, uh, their video will, will be bigger and whatnot. So yes, so teachers and students will be able to appear at the same time um, to facilitate for that collaborative kind of learning. Um, I did want to show you guys the opt-out form. So once you go to the Fairfax County website, as soon as you go on fcps.edu, um, just the homepage, you'll see this kind of message with all the information. Um, you go, go ahead here where it says read the superintendent's message on distance learning plan. You can go ahead and click on that. And once you go down, um, I'm sorry, that was actually, I clicked on the, the wrong one, I'm sorry. Um, hold on. So under academics, um, there should be, this website is constantly changing, so bear with me here. Okay, there we go. So fcps.edu on the homepage, you click on academics and continuity of learning plan. Once we go down here, we can you know, view additional information. And then right here, when you go down, you'll see go paperless. This gives you the option to opt out of the printed packets, which will take you to a page where you can put in your uh, information and be removed from the mailing list. So then you'll just be able to digitally access the packet since we did receive a number of questions about that. I see there are questions coming in. So we'll go ahead and start taking those. Um, so how exactly will third quarter grading work and how will teachers decide how to improve grades? Okay, I know this is uh, a question we continue to get, so I'm happy to always answer it. Um, okay, guys, so basically, for those who are worried about their grades, again, overall, the sentiment is maximum flexibility um, and erring on the side of the student, okay? So there was a proposed plan that was put out as a thought of how we're moving forward based on the guidance we got from the Virginia Department of Education and uh, you know the situation that we see. So that was that third quarter, um, grading, the grade book was not closed, but of course we could not issue assignments during a closure. So in that period, in those 16 days um, that you guys were home, that uh, portion of time will not have uh, any assignments that would be considered you know, required or expected to be added to grades. But if, if before that period you had assignments that were late or you wanna make up work, there's maximum flexibility with that. So you're able to submit that. If there's an issue and a teacher is saying that you can't submit late work, that's an opportunity where you wanna make sure you clarify further. You can point her to some of these resources and say that that's been kind of what's been said. Um, you're welcome to contact your principal or um, you know, a counselor or someone who can kind of follow up on that as well. Um, after third quarter, so the fourth quarter tentatively has been pass fail. 
However, obviously the community has come forward with uh, concerns and things that we've heard. So for example, as I mentioned for athletes that could really be harmful and how grades are calculated or how colleges look at certain things. Um, so there are adjustments being made and the, um, you know, I spoke with the deputy superintendent today. She literally met with people today, um, principals uh, to discuss the grading scenario and they're fighting for you guys and they're advocating for you. So um, it's being it's being evaluated and to make sure that all considerations are, are you know, thought of. Um, but that's, again, the tentative plan is that it's, uh, it would be pass fail with certain adjustments to fix that. And an opportunity to show mastery of the subject, which means that uh, you have the chance for grades to potentially be improved and tweaked moving forward. As for finals, um, the decision on those have, has not been made as of now. Part of the reason why, by the way, guys, like the situation is, is not necessarily um, crystal clear right now is because depending on how we do with the rollout of things, how engaged the student population is, what feedback we receive from the community, will adjust accordingly. Um, so it's not a matter of not necessarily having answers. It's the fact that some of these answers require us to look at the evolving situation. So hang in there. Um, it, those of you who are worried about your third quarter grade have every opportunity right now to make up that work. If you're worried about the future, know for now that it's gonna be fair towards you, that you should be tuning into classes and engaging regardless, um, and that that we are more than what the maximum flexibility kind of policy is making sure that we accommodate and, and take into account difficulties, challenges, um, and changing circumstances for individual students. So uh, that's what I'll tell you for now. Um, and that's all the information we have as of now. And more information will be coming out uh, as these decisions are being made. Um, but we did certainly see the letter. I know a number of TJ students had started and had circulated and collected many, many signatures, that has helped our, our thinking, you know? So at, we, you know, I was able to bring that to the attention of the school system. The school system has been hearing from various people. You know, some of your uh, correspondences with us have shaped the conversation and helped us think about certain considerations. So, um, you know, your voices are being heard and this process is ongoing. Um, and we will provide updates hopefully as soon as we have them. And that's part of why, you know, Kimberly and I are doing this live stream to kind of be able to, to give them to you as, as soon as we have them. Okay. Um, let's see. Question about the grading. Let's say your average of a course is a B plus out of all the quarters and do you, uh, okay, give it online. Can the final grade go in as an A minus? Um, Okay, so that's a good question. So basically the situation right now, guys, uh, I should have clarified this as well. Grades, the way they're normally calculated, right? Your final grade that you end up sending to a college or that ends up on your transcript is the grade that is a, a, um, an average of all the semesters. So you have your, or sorry, of all the quarters. So you have first quarter, second quarter, third quarter, those grades will be averaged. And that final grade will then be, um, you know, part of what weighs into your, your ultimate grade. And that fourth quarter, because it's pass fail, won't necessarily hurt it. What can happen though, is it may help it. And that's what's con currently in conversation. So the, the mastery of learning um, thing is, is what, what that means is if you demonstrate a sufficient amount of, you know, effort and hard work and engagement, there may be the opportunity to improve your final grade. Um, so, so it's possible. Uh, according to this question I see from Abdul here. Um, but, you know, the, the details of what that's going to look like to make sure it's not just subjective or, you know, grades aren't inflated, because I know those are some of the concerns you guys brought up last time, uh, are being hashed out um, as we speak. The A, B student just get the regular packets. Also, they will be having only four minutes of direct instruction from teacher in a week. Could you please clarify? Um, let's see. So, my understanding is that the learning is differentiated. So depending on the program they're in, those packets should match that. Um, I will certainly ask about this though, of what the differentiation is gonna look like. The packets will also be available online. So we may be able to look at them before they um, end up in your mailbox. Uh, and in terms of direct instruction, it should be more than that. So 
Um, I, maybe this is helpful actually to point out again. So if you guys go to the FCPS website, fcps.edu, oh, I realized I was still screen sharing. <laughs> um, and as soon as this loads, I will show you. Once we go here, we'll go down to school board. And then I'm going to go to board docs. So as I kind of mentioned last time, board docs is where all the school board's documents, agendas, meeting um, information uh, is posted. And in our last meeting, on, um, here we are. Um, we discussed the distance learning plan. So it's posted in the agenda. Let's go back to this. It looks like it may have been removed. Hold on. Special meeting. There we go. March 27th, we had a special meeting on Friday. If you go to this um, meeting and click on the agenda, you will see the distance learning plan. Um, and if you click specifically on the presentation, you will notice the schedule for students. I'll show you in just a second. Yeah, you'll notice the bell schedule right here. So instruction uh, and check-ins um, will be on more than one day and hopefully for longer period of time. Um, and if you want more details specifically on this, I would be sure to look at the, in, on the Fairfax County uh, FCPS YouTube page, there was a presentation made by um, Dr. Presidio to the school board and the explanation is in this clip, the 30 minute clip here on their um, YouTube page. So I hope that's useful. Okay, um, let's see what else here. Have you guys checked out Loudoun County's policy where they allow students to choose from three different grading options? So yeah, we have. I have brought um, to, to staff's attention the possibility of opting into various grading policies. Of course, that's a little more complicated than just um, kind of rolling it out. So it involves teachers uh, being able to facilitate that and being open to that, but it is being um, considered. So I appreciate you bringing that up. Um, so I wanna uh, address this question, the question on you know how, why it took this amount of time. Um, and Kimberly, how in the meantime, if you can pull up our previous notes from the meeting where we listed the various reasons why um, or the various things that were being done during the time. But in the meantime, um, so essentially the Virginia Department of Education provided guidance not to provide instruction for the first two weeks of, uh, of the um, closures. And that was for many reasons, some of which are uh, the, the actual transition that it took for families uh, during this time. So while many families were able to kind of smoothly, uh, you know, work from home or figure out a way, ways that childcare could be arranged. Many other families had significant um, changes or impacts uh, on an individual level. So that transition took time and certainly for our staff, um, and I don't mean by the way leadership or central office staff, uh, but I mean, you know, teachers themselves, right? Who now have to contend with not only providing learning for their own kids, um, but figuring out how to kind of adjust and, sh and shift to this, get guidance from leadership, their principals. Teachers also collaborate on curriculum. So a lot of that curriculum had to be adapted and adjusted. Um, so it's not only, you know, the fact that uh, we're, we're shifting to technology and in one day, you know, some people had that capability to be able to just kind of sit down and open their laptop the next day and start learning. Um, but the curriculum itself had to be adjust adjusted. And that takes time for teachers to come together in collaborative learning teams to figure out how they wanna do that. 
Of course, there are many thousands of kids in our county who don't even have access to technology. Uh, so we had to kind of bridge that gap and bring those resources to them. And the governor's guidance was that we're not supposed to distribute materials that except in a one one to one fashion. So even for the laptops to be distributed, there were very clear procedures, time consuming procedures as to how they are to be given out. So just, those are just some of the considerations. I'll have Kimberly outline some of them in a sec. Um, actually, let her do that and then I'll comment, please. So I have it all right here. And to, before I get into it, I just want to also like talk about the sheer size of our county because we have a hundred, well, roughly 190,000 students. And in comparison to Loudoun and um, Arlington, Loudoun has 80,000. So we have about 100,000 more students more than them. And um, Arlington has about 30,000 students. So to put that in perspective, we have like multiple times larger than some of these counties. So logistically, it's a lot more difficult for us to get up and running. So more specifically, like Actually, um, Kimberly, if you don't mind, just to add to that too, a consideration, guys, again, not excuses, just explanations of reality. Um, Loudoun and Arlington also had technology capabilities that we didn't necessarily have at the time because of where the community was at on certain things. So like laptops, for example, right? Having one-to-one -one laptops for students. Fairfax, the community still was very, you know, conflicted about whether we wanted to do that. And the board hadn't voted, the previous board hadn't voted to implement that um, until much more recently. Whereas Arlington, other counties have had that for a much longer period of time. So the transition to online learning was much smoother. Just wanted to put that out, but go ahead. So there's a lot. So I'm just gonna like just run through. Totally. So the transition time for staff who are now home with their kids, that needs to be taken into account. So they have arrangements so they can begin work again, deep cleaning, of all the school buildings. So teachers have the op and staff have the opportunity to retrieve their items, the safe distribution of materials as the brush stated, it has to be done in a one-to-one, -one, like one by one um, method. And that accounts for 15,000 middle school and elementary school students in accordance to like the health guidelines and the technology infrastructure that to make sure that it's available for um, all students that may need it. Meal provision and shelter accommodation for thousands the diverse learning needs of our students, including uh, mental wellness and um, uh, taking into account students with disabilities, um, complete readaption and development of our curriculum to make it um, able to be done through the uh, online learning, which includes the printing and mailing of 125,000 learning packets weekly and the appropriate training for teachers and staff. So all that goes into why it took so long and actually, Considering all these elements, I would say personally as a student that it was rather quick. I'm not, even though I am a student rep on the board, I'm not even close to this background, how like, much this is took to get going. So this getting all this done and the time that we've had has been rather quick in my opinion. Yeah, I mean, I just wanna provide some clarity because I know the community's trust here is a piece of this and it's like, why can't these people just get it done? Or why can't we just be, you know, the same way? I understand that frustration. Uh, and and I, honestly, as a person, if I had been on the outside, I may have shared some of these thoughts, you know, um, largely because I may not have realized the, the extent of what goes on one-to-one -one with, as, as Kimberly mentioned, given our size, um, having to handle these kinds of situations and, and make sure the transition is smooth. So I just want, you know, what Kimberly outlined just as an exercise, perhaps to think of the, the many, many considerations and to give you guys some context too. I mean, the school board's role is to hold the staff accountable, right? So our job really is to kind of push them to do things better, to bring things to their attention. When we, I mean, seeing staff right now, staff are working nonstop 16 hour days, weekends included, you know, from the beginning of this crisis. Um, to, to kind of bring forth this transition as quickly as possible. Uh, so, you know, the, we uh, honestly, guys, from an objective lens, they have, th this has shown incredible responsibility from our school system. And some counties have been quicker to jump the gun because they've been able to um, just kind of roll out the education piece, put out what materials uh, the public will, will kind of see and work with. 
But Fairfax has been spending time, our staff have been spending time thinking of all the considerations that'll make it successful to make sure that once we do put it out, we don't have mistakes, we don't have problems. And, and sure there will be, but as much as possible that we anticipate those challenges and plan for them before we push things out. Before we train our teachers on how to do it, let's make sure we, we have a good solid understanding of how and make sure that all our students can access it and then let's do it, right? So a lot of that pre work that is done and the thoughtful planning that's put forward uh, ensures the success of the rest of it. Um, so that's just something to keep in mind and, and is a large part of why, honestly, I'm really proud of our leadership team and, and how they're working through this and, and continuing, you know, to, to be picky and raise my concerns and hold them accountable, but recognize the reality for what it is. Okay, let's see here. Um, my middle schooler who is taking geometry has no geometry included in the packet. Also none of the advanced curriculum for other courses are included. Um, so regarding the packets, um, if you have specific questions, uh, the packet has not been mailed to me. So I <laughs> am not particularly, you know, I can't speak to those details, but what I would do is A, I would start with reaching out to the teacher to ask specifically for materials uh, on those instructional topics. Because keep in mind, a lot of uh, the material will be coming directly from the teacher as well, right? So on Blackboard uh, and the variety of uh, learning tools, which are gonna be um, provided. Actually, let me um, screen share real quick to remind everyone. Um, let's see here. So in the same board docs um, place that I showed you guys earlier how to get to, there's the distance learning plan. Um, and in this plan, it lists the, the many places where content can be found. So I want to be very clear that yes, the packet, this is, you know, this is a page on the packets right here and when they're going to be sent out and the plans. Um, but besides these packets, these are just one tool of so many others that are going to be used for instruction. And right here on page eight is where you can see the full list of um, resources, materials, that many of which are already in use and students are, are kind of comfortable with. Um, and many of which are, or several of which are gonna be uh, newer tools or used differently. Um, so I'd, I'd highly recommend that you make sure that you look at all the different places in, in addition to the packets where teach, students are gonna be um, receiving the materials they need for their particular subjects. Um, and if you still have questions, no doubt, contact the teacher and the counselors in office hours. So as I said, counselors are gonna, um, have office hours now where you can tune in and ask them uh, more specific questions. Um, and I'd be happy to advocate if I, uh, in whatever way I can, if you're still finding tr uh, trouble, once you contact you know, the counselor, maybe you, you also talk to the principal about your concern. And once you go to the principal and there's still concern, um, that's where we uh, are able to step in. Okay. Um, my high school students and laptops distributed at the beginning of the high school students and laptops. Yeah, so I'm not sure if you what your particular question was on this one, but high school students um, as of now should have laptops. If you know or are a high school student who doesn't have technology access at home, but needs it, please reach out. Um, you know, April 14th is gonna be the date when you can, you're expected to be in class and whatnot virtually. And we wanna make sure everyone gets those materials as of now, that distribution has been completed. Again, if there's an oversight or if there's someone you know who still needs it, uh, which hopefully shouldn't be the case, but be sure to, to flag that for us. Okay. Um, I received this email from my teacher. One lesson each day for my four classes. So as a general point to Jimmy's question, um, guys, You'll be receiving, you know, there's been a lot of information kind of flying around here and there. Um, I mentioned last time that staff started working March 30th at, formally. Okay, I mean, wait, 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 actually, let me, let me break that down to make sure that's a clear statement. Central office staff, leadership team, planning staff have been working since the moment this started. Teachers have been expected to work and provide uh, clarification on things March 30th. Um, that's when they started meeting formally with their principals virtually, which, as I said, happened this past Monday, where principals met with all teachers and give them instruction. 
which is why you probably have received emails from your teachers by now with you know clarifying content and resources of what's happening. If you haven't, you really should be receiving those in the next few days, but all teachers have been instructed to do that. Um, so any information you may have received prior, um, I would ask for clarification on. So for example, this specific question here on how much instruction, how often, um, I would certainly reach out to clarify from your teacher. And, and if there's still confusion um, to perhaps loop in you know, your principal or your counselor, because there was a lot of, um, you know, the teachers tried to be as helpful as they could be. Uh, now that they're receiving, you know, formal kind of guidance on what's happening, um, things are, and given the fact that certain things are fluid, they have some flexibility to determine what's happening. There's still a baseline though, right? So there's an expected amount of instruction time. Teachers may be encouraging you guys to tune in more often, and that may be an expectation for a specific class. Um, I think that's what you're referring to here, where uh, if I'm reading this correctly, yeah, so so it may be that that's what they're asking you to do, um, which again would be under this kind of pass fail or lack of consequence system. Um, so I would I would ask for more clarity on that specific situation, but the general rule of thumb I would tell you guys is be wary of information that you know may or specific questions that you may have asked specific staff or whatnot previously. Um, I would start you know from now going forward uh, focusing on what information can be obtained and, and clarified. Um, because now, here's the thing, now it's tangible, right? You can log in, you have your classes, uh, or your teachers have sent you instruction. There's something to work with. Before, it was kind of trying to plan and figure things out. Um, so once you, know, you, you begin courses, it'll also be more and more clear as we go forward. I have verified and told from the teacher that direct instruction is 45 minutes for a course once in a week. Um, okay, so like I said, you know, the, the course schedule is posted um, in this packet. Let me find the page for you again. Oh, I'm sorry, in the, in the presentation. Right, so this is the expected course schedule for middle and high school. In addition to expectations of assignments and supplementary materials and whatnot that teachers will be providing. So it really is gonna be course by course and I would recommend that you maintain contact with instructors uh, to obtain that information. Of course. Thank you uh, for your questions. Um, anyone else have additional questions? Happy to try to provide some clarity wherever we can. Kimberly, maybe if you can provide a glimpse of what you have uh, received so far. Um, and where you're at uh, as an example of what students should be expecting. Or as in like the, what's it called? The plan or like question wise? No, no, so from your own teachers and emails that you've received clarity, you know, so for example, right? The superintendent sent an email uh, for seniors. Um, teachers may be sending emails with instructions on what to do, things like that. Like if you just give from your own kind of perspective, maybe even for some of the parents watching, what is a reasonable thing to expect that their kids are receiving? Okay, yeah, so totally. So even today, like the, earlier this morning and this afternoon, I was in a Blackboard collabor collaborate meeting with two of my teachers. Uh, we had it at different, I had my physics one at 10 this morning and I had a biology one at one. And we had the meeting basically about updates and what will be happening in the future. And like just to kind of put uh, we'll talk about how the collaborate worked. The collaborate worked great. I've never had any problems with Blackboard Collaborate. And it seems like it's gonna be a great tool, especially for like presentation wise. And also for, from what I've heard from uh, staff members and teachers, they've all just been um, kind of just going through and like, hey, if you need any help in terms of third quarter, we've been talking a lot about third quarter. A lot of teachers are trying really hard to make sure that they get 
whatever work that students have needed. They've been reaching out to students and saying, okay, make sure you turn them in, make sure you, if you need any assistance, um, reach out to me. And for fourth quarter, many teachers are like, have been echoing what we've all been saying, like it won't ex like per se be graded, but work done in fourth quarter will be like, in a sense, taken into account when calculating the final, like final um, grade. So that's basically what I've been hearing on my end. And it's kind of mostly what, like the same thing that we've been hearing from like Dr. Brabrand and the school board. Thanks, Kimberly. Yeah, and so as she's kind of outlined from her personal experience, things are coming, right? So as I said, staff started March 30th, principals met with all teachers virtually uh, on Monday and started explaining what's going on. Uh, teachers are now reaching out to their classrooms or their students. Um, and hopefully trying to make that one-to-one -one contact that's part of what's being emphasized as a best practice and whatnot, right? To make sure that families have what they need, students are ready, they're situated. While this is happening in the school, uh, in the school on the school level, leadership team and our departments are distributing or have been continuing to distribute laptops, meals, internet devices to make sure that those students are prepared. There's been translation services uh, happening throughout all of this for all of these links with parents to clarify that information. Um, and, you know, the, the division is, is continuing to discuss what's happening for curriculum, for grading, as we continue moving forward to properly train staff uh, and get them prepared for that April 14th uh, instruction time. So I hope that that's um, helpful. Yes. Okay. So will therapists be providing OT and speech therapy over the internet during this time if it is in a student's IEP? All right. So the IEP situation certainly is a, a little bit complex. Um, we're waiting on more guidance from the Department of Education on how that's going to be handled broadly. Um, in terms of OT, I don't want to comment specifically on OT, but I will ask that question. What I will say, though, is there will be office hours um, for all these other staff, right? So for uh, for our social workers, for uh, counselors, uh, for the support staff in the building, they will be providing virtual office hours. Um, and right now, our special ed staff, our, our leadership team is working with IT, is collaborating with our you know, curriculum experts to adapt these materials to virtual. So I would anticipate that that's an example of that. Um, but I will be, you know, and Teresa Johnson will be providing us with an update with more information as well. So hopefully in a future live stream, I'll be answering your question more specifically. Um, I am going to write it down to, to get your answer for the next session. Um, but I expect that, that something like that will, will be happening. So thanks for that question. It's a very important, um, very important question. And the same goes for mental health resources, by the way. So it's going to follow a similar kind of format where students will have the opportunity to opt into office hours. Actually, Kelly, this it might be useful to think of what's normally provided in the summer. Um, so when I spoke with Teresa Johnson about this, um, who, for everyone's sake, Teresa Johnson is the director of special services, again, who handles special education. Um, my understanding was that it would follow a similar format to what's normally done over the summer. Um, so you, we have these kind of virtual office hour opportunities for, for mental health supports, for different you know, therapy needs. Um, and we're lucky enough that that's kind of already been happening. So it may follow a similar format. But again, I will try to get some more information on that specifically for you. Any other questions? I want to run through to make sure I know there were several questions last time that I believe we answered in our live stream, but I just want to make sure here um, that anyone who asked. A lot of them were about grades, which I think we covered. Um, I think we have largely covered the questions that came in last time as well. Um, we still are awaiting College Board updates on the June SAT, um, but as I said before, given that we're closed from the governor's order until June 10th at minimum, 
uh, the stay at home order that came out Tuesday as well, you know, reinforce that. Um, it doesn't appear that it's going to be possible to do in a school building, but that's up to College Board to kind of provide their plans. How about ESOL services? Yes, okay, very good question um, regarding ESOL services. So one of the you know, communities that we're most concerned about, of course, is the English learning population during this time. Um, so the, what's gonna happen is there will be, firstly, um, there are hotlines for eight different languages so far for families to access resources, to ask further questions about where they can, how they can support their kids. Um, those are on the website. I'm gonna try to pull these up as I'm speaking. In addition, um, the channel 21 will be used for different resources. Um, so let me see here. I'm gonna try to pull this up to, to kind of make this more concrete. Um, and you know, curriculum experts are working to try to adapt some of those materials. No doubt it's gonna be very difficult, especially for early levels um, that are less advanced in the language. Um, but teachers will be providing detail. I mean, they should have already contacted students to provide some instruction on how that's gonna happen. Um, hopefully, if you haven't received that by tomorrow, you should be hearing from them, um, but it's gonna continue. You know, not, no one is uh, gonna be put at a disadvantage um, in, in as much as we can control. So I uh, just wanna make sure that that's clear. Um, getting in here real quick to show you guys. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and, and share my screen uh, so that you see this real quick. Okay, so if you go into the FCPS website, fcps.edu, and then continue, uh, go down, you see the academic continuity of learning plan. I will show you in just a second. View information. Once you go down, you'll notice, um, let's see. Distance learning plan supports for English learners. So I would encourage you to look at this in more depth um, as soon as this loads. Okay, so you're able to translate this page. Um, let me see, yeah, the question was in English, so I'll proceed in English. Um, these are the parent information lines. So if anyone has you know, additional questions on specific resources or specific languages, um, they should utilize those. Uh, parent liaisons are, you know, will certainly be in contact with you guys. There are also a number of resources that are listed here. So if you click on the Parent Resource Center, as soon as this loads, I will show you what I mean. There are a number of resources um, that you can access. There's also a list of tutors that may be able to um, support students. Um, but in addition to all of this, there will be curriculum um, for students who are learning uh, available. So I would ask the specific language lines for those um, and wait for the co correspondence from teachers. If you don't hear from your students, um, from your child's teachers, uh, in, you know, in the next few days by early next week, I would certainly reach out to your principal uh, because all are expected to have been in contact so far to give you further instruction on what Things will look like for English language learners. But in a similar fashion, you know, they're going to have their schedule, you know, school is going to school is going to start April 14th. Um, so that's what I would expect if I were you from now. Um, let's see. As for the WIDA, um, testing uh, regarding languages, that will also be something that teachers will provide more information on. Um, so if you're not able to obtain that information through the phone line, 
uh, or your teacher directly, I would highly encourage you to reach out again to your counselor and principal. If you're having a tough time with any of the information coming from your school leadership, you're welcome to reach out to us and we can try to provide more clarity. But I will take note of that. I have written it down to try to bring more information on WIDA for the next live stream um, and what that's gonna look like testing wise and how that's gonna be implemented. Yeah, so extended school year, summer school, um, those kinds of conversations are uh, currently on the to-do list. Um, so the priority as of now is distribution of, um, you know, learning materials, learning uh, resources, tools like the laptops and the internet devices and the food, the meals, um, and getting our staff up to date with everything, knowing what's happening for the distance learning plan, hopefully rolling that out successfully starting April 14th. The minute that happens, we're probably going to be planning for some of the senior, um, you know, graduation and, and things that seniors are looking forward to. Um, and as soon as those plans are figured out, as we continue to adjust and, and go on the day to day of everything related to the distance learning plan, um, the conversations about summer school and whatnot will will happen. So those have not been determined yet. It's hard to know. I mean, if we look at some of the projections of what's happening, you know, there was a feeling that there was an understanding that by, oh, by June, we're going to be fine, you know, school, okay, school's out, but, but it certainly isn't looking like that, right? So we don't know if the governor is going to extend uh, closure or not. We don't know what's going to happen in regards to uh, whether anything will be open. As we know now, all public buildings and offices and whatnot are closed. So as the situation continues to evolve, we'll be making, um, plans and considerations related to summer programming. I'm sorry I couldn't have a you know, more clear answer to you, but for you, but what I will say too is I think this is um, the right approach. So I, I trust staff ju staff's judgment and recognize that because of the constantly evolving situation, we have to make the most informed decisions uh, for the division, right? So it's hard to make decisions about that long ahead um, before knowing what you know, with such an uncertain situation before knowing what's really going on. Um, so we'll provide that information for you as soon as possible. I will try to get the most updated um, tidbit. I doubt there's much, but uh, I wrote it down to, to come back in the next live stream. I just got a question from a friend. When are we getting caps and gowns as seniors? Uh, caps and gowns, yeah, so, um, that's a great question. Like I said, so as soon as we have this, this phase of DLP rollout, the distance learning plan rollout, we will be able to um, transition into focus on seniors and senior planning. Um, what I will say, Kimberly and I plan to connect with class councils to support the school system. Uh, and we're really excited about that to kind of bring the student voices, have a brainstorm. We're gonna host a corn stream, one of these sessions specifically on this topic soon to just have, you know, community engagement on what we can do and to bring that forward. Caps and gowns will probably be part of that conversation as well. Um, you know, there was a school district uh, somewhere around here um, in a different state that is using Roblox for graduation. They're trying to have, yeah, isn't that a cool idea? I thought that was really um, creative. So just thinking of ways to make it special and hopefully, you know, uh, the caps and gowns process will be a part of that. Um, so we'll see, we'll see. There are so many ways that we can make this really unique and special <laughs> for folks, as crazy as it sounds. Um, and that timeline has not been set yet. So Maeve, I'm sorry I didn't have a specific um, answer to that question, but I know that there isn't really an answer right now. It's gonna be determined moving forward. Jimmy, you don't you don't like the Roblox idea? Yeah, so I mean, the idea is to have like a community brainstorm, bring together the best ideas, vote on them, or come up with some way of doing it, right? I'm gonna try my best to facilitate that um, to make sure that whatever does happen is something folks are happy with. Um, of course. Any other questions? So I, I did see a couple of questions in Arabic that I didn't answer. Um, so I can go back. هل توفرت أجهزة التنفس بإعداد كافية في الولايات المتحدة؟ 
بالنسبه لاجهزه التنفس طبعا هذا هذا البرنامج يخص في التعليم لكن وليس لدي المعلومات الان لاجب عن هذا السؤال بالضبط لكن اتوقع ان الجواب موجود عبر النت ما هي الولايات الاكثر حالات في كوفيد وما هي الولايات الاقل حالات الان الولايات التي لديها اكثر حالات هي نيويورك طبعا كما راينا ولكن كما كما قلت ان هذا هذا البرنامج يخص التعليم في هذه المقاطعه والتغيرات المتوقع المتوقعه بسبب هذا الفيروس ف شكرا على السؤال نعم اوليفيا uh, I am impressed you translated a <laughs> an answer in Arabic thank you very much um, ف... الاخ سنوسي اسماعيل و نعم الاخ سنوسي تفضلت اوليفيا بجواب سؤالك في ال... في التعليقات thank you for answering the question Olivia any other questions before we um, wrap up here or you know anything else we can provide clarity on also encourage you you know if there are topics you would like for us to focus on um, we've considered doing things you know on mental health on special ed um, on seniors as i said um, to have more focused corn stream sessions that can delve deeper and kind of collect community feedback as well so Feel free to type in any topics that you would be interested in hearing more about. I'll give it another minute and no one else has any questions. Okay, so with that, um, thank you guys for tuning in. As always, um, continue to take care of yourselves. We posted mental health resources in our first live stream. There is, you know, the bit.ly slash corn stream. Um, you'll see a list of resources and, and hotlines and whatnot that can be useful to you. Um, um, and if you have any other questions or concerns, please tune in, ask them. I took note of the ones that I wasn't able to provide too much clarity on right now. Um, and I'm gonna be collecting that information, bringing it to our next live stream. Um, feel free to, you know, you know how to find me, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, uh, email, <laughs> text, whatever it is that you have. And Kimberly, if you wanna say something too. Yeah, I mean, as always, thank you for your questions. Thank you for having so much input about this whole situation. And as always, you can always reach out to me and anybody else in the school board if you have any more questions or just want to talk. Absolutely. And reminder tomorrow, so, so two dates that I want you to kind of keep in mind. Tomorrow at 2 p.m., Dr. Braybrand will be going on. Dr. Braybrand is our superintendent. That's like the CEO of our school system. Uh, and a reminder, you know, our school board is an elected body. We oversee and uh, guide the superintendent who's the CEO of the school system, right? And he manages it on a day-to-day, -day, makes big decisions for it and whatnot. So he's gonna be providing uh, some more information at a live stream tomorrow uh, on the Fairfax County Public Schools Facebook page. So tune into that. Um, and then in addition, uh, be sure to check the Fairfax County Public Schools website uh, for updates on that school board tab that I showed you guys. Uh, as to when our next budget meeting is going to be. Um, it is only tentative right now. Once that date's finalized, it'll be updated um, so that you can continue being in the loop on what's happening. Until then, um, or until Sunday, um, we'll be having our, you know, on Sunday we'll be having our, our corn stream again at 7 p.m. So feel free to bring additional questions and we look forward to having you then. All right. Okay. Bye. <laughs>